Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be discussing about cross-site request forgeries. So what does cross-site request forgeries stand for? And of course, over here, we have WebGoat. So WebGoat is a vulnerable web application system for us to test out different kind of vulnerabilities associated with web application systems. And of course, in WebGoat's case, we have OWASP, which stands for Open Web Application Security Project Top 10. And of course, under A8, under Request Forgeries, we have Cross-Site Request Forgeries. So it is a slightly more technical term, and we will break it down word by word. So cross-site, cross-site stands for running from different sites across sites. And request forgeries, meaning that we are trying to send a request on behalf of somebody else. So that is the meaning of request forgery, sending requests on behalf of someone else. And one very simple example is that if you're logged into, say, an e-commerce website and you got a link and someone gave you a link and you click onto the link, whether it's coming from an SMS, a social media messenger, or even your email. So you click onto the link that brings you to the correct website. So it is the e-commerce website that you already have an account on. You are already logged in, okay? And when you click onto the link, it creates and runs certain instructions on your behalf because you already have the session running. And this brings us back to one of the earlier topics, which is on cookies. So every time you have a session into a web application system, for example, on a social media platform, on an e-commerce site, on your bank account. And what happens is that you log in for the first time using your username and your password. And once you log in, you have the function of saving your login details. And as you save the login details, you are able to maintain that session inside the web application system. And as you maintain session, and as you click onto those links, it will run certain instructions over here. So again, WebGoat is a wonderful platform for you to download, install, run it, and educate yourself about web application vulnerabilities. So kudos to the WebGoat development team and the people who have built this wonderful educational platform for us to learn about web application vulnerabilities. So over here, all right, so it exploits the, use, the site's trust in that identity. It involves sites that rely on the user's identity by checking on their cookies information and then running those instructions as they come into the URL. All right, so moving to the second lesson, all right, so for example, over here, we have a particular URL link. All right, so this is a HTML. We have a href, so let me zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. And of course, we can see over here, we have a link. So the link goes to a bank and it transfer money from the existing account to another account and the amount of $100,000. And over here, it says, view my picture. Okay, and then it closes the URL link. So as a result of that, when you click onto the link, once you click onto the link, it will run those instructions because of the instruction over here, transfer followed by the account number from and the account number to followed by the amount. Okay, so it will run those instructions, especially if you are already logged in to the site. All right, so that's how it's able to run. So for example, over here, we have a submission of query. All right, so cross-site request forgery exercise. All right, so we can trigger the form below from an external source while logged in. The response will include a flag, a numeric value. So once you click submit query, it says over here, right? So again, we are looking at the normal way of running things, all right? In the customer journey map, this is what we clicked on. So we see over here, there's a flag is null and with success is false. And the message says that appears the request came from the original host. So we can go back here, all right? Then we can try to craft our own HTML, all right? To be able to get those flags. So that's exactly how it's done, right? So the hackers, what they will do is they will create a fake website and fake website could be saying, click here to get a million dollars, click here to unlock your account and so on and so forth. So again, what you're doing is trying to trick us into clicking those links. And once you click onto those links, those instructions will be sent to the websites that we already have a session on. And once it is run, it could run those instructions, right? For example, checking out from a shopping cart, adding items to a shopping cart, transferring money, which you saw earlier as part of the example. Okay, so what we'll do is we can do a right click. All right, we can do a right click and we can click under inspect element. Okay, so you can do this for Firefox. So we're here having Mozilla Firefox running. So you can click under inspect element. 
okay and this will show us all right the form id okay so what we can do is just do a right click under the form id so again it's very important for us to understand about how to create and build html sites including forms so over here we have the form id and we have the input name which is of course hidden and we have the input type submit name is submit so right click on this all right click under copy and then click under alter html all right so go in and click on that and this will copy everything inside this particular form so open up any of your favorite editor of course over here we have the editor and we can paste it very very quickly into the setup so i'm gonna paste over here so there are some slight differences that we need to amend in order for our form to work so in this case we have the form so everything is on the top is actually the one that has been amended for us to actually send over to the user and once the user clicks on it we'll be able to hijack your session okay so over here we have the following so we need to enter the action so remember to put in for example over here http all right followed by the ip address or the website domain name followed by the port number if any all right so in our case we have port number of 8080 followed by slash webgoat slash csrf slash basic dash get dash flag all right so we have all this data over here so once you have this running all right you can go in and save it save it into a dot html file so over here i've saved it into webgoat csrf.html and you can see that save it into the desktop so let us go ahead and go into the desktop and of course here i have the webgoat csrf-.html so if you see all of the files that we have done previously we have done so many different tutorials so very important for you to subscribe if you want to keep abreast to be kept abreast of all these cybersecurity tutorials so go ahead and double click on it all right so for example we can open with say firefox all right so go and open it up and over here right so we are pointing to a file as you can see from the url and of course if you click onto the submit query okay and immediately says true congratulations appears you made the request from a separate host so we managed to create a form that allow us the ability to actually help do a cross-site request forgery on behalf of the existing session and we have the flag over here 57077 so let's go back to web code and we can close the web developer and we can enter 57077 right so this is 57077 as the flag go ahead and click submit and it says congratulations appears you made the request from your local machine so once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your queries. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.